Greetings, welcome to Day of the Indie. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to install and create custom brushes in Clip Studio. To help get you started, go grab yourself the free pack of brushes over at dayoftheindie.com. Go ahead, I'll wait. All right, so you downloaded the free brushes and you even grabbed yourself the 16 zombie killing brushes just for fun. Perfect. So how do you get these installed? Well, first you need to launch Clip Studio. Then you need to make a spot for the new custom brushes. Sure, you could just add them into any of the tool groups, but it's best to keep your brushes organized. By the way, the term brushes is a bit misleading. In Clip Studio, there are tools and subtools which are broken down into different categories like pens, brushes, erasers, etc. For example, the pen tool has a collection of subtools like the G pen, the mapping pen, and so on and so forth. However, most folks are more familiar with the term brushes, and while it may not be technically accurate to use these terms interchangeably, I don't think the universe is going to rip itself apart if we do. However, if that does happen, I take full responsibility and I totally apologize. Okay, back to setting up the spot for these brushes. To do that, the easiest way is to copy an existing subtool. Go ahead and select the mapping pen. Now click the Create Copy of Currently Selected Subtool button located here at the bottom of the panel. Change the name to Dottie and then click OK. Now using this copy, you can create a new group by dragging it up to the top of the tool palette, like so. You now have a new tool group ready and waiting for some new brushes. So there are two ways to import brushes. You can import them one at a time, which can take forever if you have a lot of brushes, or you can import an entire group, which is the way to go. So how do you do that? Simple. You start by moving the canvas out of the way. Then you select the group of brushes from your file system. Once you have the brushes selected, you drag them back into Clip Studio, dropping them on the newly created group. Huzzah! Your new brushes are installed and you can start using them right away. But what if you wanted to create your own brushes? Well, it all starts with an image. Go ahead and create a new file. You don't have to give it a file name, but I'm going to call this one Custom Brushes. You can do the same if you want to. Now here's the important part. You need to set the width to 2000 pixels, the height to 2000 pixels, and the resolution to 300 DPI. This will give you a nice size to work with. More important than that, however, is setting the basic expression color to gray. If you fail to do that, your brush will not work as expected. For example, when you go to use it, you won't be able to select a color. The final setting here is the paper color. Now you can leave it white if you want, but I like to change my background to what I call green screen green color. This allows me to see things better as I draw them and color them. Again, this is a matter of personal preference, but maybe you should give it a try and see if you like it. Okay, with these settings in place, you can click the OK button to create your new file. <laughs> that is a mighty shade of green, isn't it? All right, so look, there are a lot of ways and techniques to create custom brushes. And to be quite honest with you, it is a very personal and creative process. So for this demo, I'm just going to throw some lines onto the canvas. I'm also going to add in some variations with shading. This will allow the brush to do some wicked cool things later on. Now you don't have to do any of this, you can just draw one or two lines to get going, but I encourage you to come back here and try some different things later on. This here is just an example. Okay, this looks good. It's time to take this image and turn it into something that's usable for brushes, and that something in Clip Studio is called Image Material. To register this image as new material, make sure you're on layer 1. I'm actually going to rename this layer to Custom Brush because I like to keep things organized. With the layer selected, go to Edit, Register Material, and then select Image. When the Material Property window pops up, you'll see a nice preview of what the image material will look like. If it looks good, which I bet it does, the first thing you want to do, because it's so easy to forget, is to check the Use for Brush Tip Shape box down here in the bottom left. The next thing is to select a location in which to save the material. I made a new folder for mine, but that's because I really love to be organized. If you don't have a separate folder, you can choose the image material location. I'm also going to set a search tag so it's easier to locate later. Again, this is optional, but well, you know, organization and all. 
When you have everything set, click OK. And there you go. Your material is now in the library, ready and waiting. So what next? How do you take this material object and turn it into a brush? Remember the tool you copied earlier? Well, you're going to use that. With that tool selected, right click and choose Settings of Subtool from the list. Now rename it from Dottie to Dottie colon custom brush, then click OK. Now head over to the Tool Property tab and click the little wrench at the bottom right. This brings up the properties for the subtool or the brush. Inside this window is where you can set all of the options for your brush, including the tip that you want to use. Go ahead and select Brush Tip from the left hand side. Then click on the Material tab over here on the right. In order to select the material you just created, click on the Add Brush Tip Shape button over here. Then search for your brush. <laughs> now you know why those search tags are handy. And when you find it, select it. Now go in and mess around with some of the other settings until you get the brush looking the way you want. And you'll see a little preview up here in the top. You can adjust things like the thickness or the size or even the opacity. Notice here the little eye icon. When this is showing, that option is available on the Subtool Property window of the brush. So if you wanted to have quick access to that option, let's say on the thickness setting, for example, you can just set it like this and boom, there you go. It shows up on the panel. OK, let's go with these settings and switch over to the test canvas. I want to see how this brush looks. That looks pretty sweet. Oh, and remember the shades of gray? Well, now I can set two different colors on my brush. Then voila, instant coolness. All right, so the last thing to do here is to get this brush out and into the wild. Maybe you want to share it with your friends or sell it on your site or whatever the case is. To do that, select the brush, right click and choose Export Subtool. Now select a location, give it a name and click Save. You now have a brush that you can share with the world. Keep in mind, you only scratch the surface of custom brushes in Clip Studio. Go ahead and play around. Don't worry too much about how things turn out. Get comfortable with all the different settings and push yourself to try new things. You never know, you might end up with something really cool. Remember something, if you're not having fun, you're probably not doing it right. Until next time, folks, take care. If you enjoyed watching this video, leave a comment, let us know on Twitter, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.